now know the Antarctic ice sheet is melting much faster than had previously been predicted. The focus earlier had been on the Arctic polar ice cap and it was believed that melting was taking place at a rate at which by 2016 we would probably have no ice cap at all in the summers. Now we know that Antarctica is also unstable and in fact, six of the glaciers on the shore of the Amundsen Sea in the Antarctic are melting and flowing into the sea. We are heading towards a particular sector of West Antarctica draining into the Amundsen Sea. This sector is drained by six glaciers. The biggest ones are Pine Island Glacier and Twaits Glacier. The speed of the glaciers measured by satellite is shown in color code. Red is fast, blue is slower, and green is the slowest. The glaciers flow into the sea and form floating extensions called ice shelves. Now in red are the areas where the flow speed is increasing almost every year. The darker the red, the more the glacier has been speeding up. You see that all the glaciers are speeding up. Now we focus our attention on the Smith Glacier, which is a smaller glacier, but which has experienced some of the most dramatic changes. The grounding line of Smith Glacier in 1996 is at the transition boundary between the blue color, the ice shelf, and the white color, ice resting on the continent. Now we transition to 2011. The grounding line is 35 kilometers farther back, a retreat of nearly 2 kilometers per year. If we could peel off the ice from the continent and see the bed, this is what it would look like. The arrows indicate the flow direction of ice, their color indicates the speed. Blue is slow, red is fast. We see that the glaciers flow on top of major subglacial valleys colored in brown. The darker the brown color, the deeper the valleys. As the glaciers retreat, they will follow these deep valleys. There is no mountain or big hill along the way that could act as a barrier to hold these glaciers back. The glaciers speed up, the grounding line retreat, the deep valleys that are sloping inland all reinforce each other to make the retreat of ice in this part of Antarctica unstoppable. And we think that this is what is happening right now. It is expected that over the next 100 years, the sea level could rise by 1 meter or about 3 feet, putting a lot of low-lying areas in the world, including parts of India, underwater. It is expected that a large portion of the Antarctic ice sheet will disappear over the next 200 to 900 years, depending on which computer model you choose to believe. This would actually lead to the world's sea level rising by about 3 meters. This would have disastrous consequences for different parts of the world. Three papers have independently shown that the Antarctic ice sheet is unstable. All of them have used satellite radar and aircraft radar to map details of the glaciers. And all of them have come to a conclusion that Antarctic ice sheet is not stable. And this means significant acceleration of the melting of the glaciers in Antarctica. Now why is this happening? It is very clear that global warming is a larger cause for what's taking place in Antarctica. The argument that surface temperature has not changed by much in the last 10 years, and therefore we can be complacent about global warming, has already been contradicted by the IPCC's fifth assessment report, which has clarified that the clearest indication of global warming is not the surface temperature, but really the ocean temperature. We know greenhouse gases absorb heat. According to IPCC, 90% of this heat is then absorbed by the top ocean layer. The melting of the glacier is also caused by warm ocean waters melting the glaciers from below. So it's not the top of the glaciers which are melting fast, it's really the submerged portions. This has other consequences as well. As glaciers melt, since a large part of the ice is actually underwater, the demarcating line between land and the ocean actually starts to retreat. As a glacier melts, it gets thinner, loses weight, and then it actually rises up. And as it rises up, the grounding line retreats and you have an increased flow of the glaciers taking place into the sea, as glaciers are now more exposed to warm ocean water. So this is the reason why Antarctica's glaciers are melting faster than previously predicted. Therefore, IPCC's prediction regarding how much the sea level would rise could be off by a fairly substantial degree, because what we are seeing is almost the worst case scenario coming into existence. So what does this mean for South Asia? If we look at a model of rise of ocean levels by one meter, then you can see the areas that would go underwater. Particularly the coastal areas, of course, 
a large part of Bangladesh would also go underwater. Large parts of Mumbai and its adjoining areas would be underwater. And also after a certain point, the areas in West Bengal near Kolkata and so on would go underwater. The Maldives would be completely submerged. So you can see the impact of global warming would be significant on different parts of India and this, of course, is true for the rest of the world. The problem that we have in the world today is that any amount of evidence that is produced to show the impact of global warming is considered insufficient by climate change deniers. In spite of the fact that there is enough data now to show that we are heading towards a climate disaster, this does not seem to convince climate change skeptics, particularly in the US. This therefore precludes any meaningful global action which must, in order to be effective, include one of the major carbon dioxide emitters in the world, the United States. The key problem in climate change discussions is that the rest of the world is being held hostage essentially by one rogue state, that is the United States of America. And this is extremely dangerous for the globe. Without action being taken today, not only will we be unable to stop what is happening, but we may even accelerate the rate at which glacier melting is taking place, leading to an even bigger disaster.